Hello! If you watched some of my videos before, you may remember that I made it all based on the lingerie dress video that Bernadette Banner made. And I made a medieval doll based on the curdle video Morgan Donna made. Today, we have another YouTuber that is the giver of ideas. This time it will be Rachel Maxey. And I completely was in love, or I, I still am in love, with her version, her pumpkin costume. Not only do I like the updated version, but I also loved the original. Though I am already pumpkin shaped, I don't need a pumpkin hat. And before I ever uh, use a pumpkin hat, I have a creepy doll costume right there that I have to wear one day. Instead of making a costume for myself, I decided to make a doll. What kind of surprise? So, let's go! The biggest of all surprises, I started by cutting off the hair of the doll I wanted to use and then got rid of the ears. Though I decided to wrap some aluminium foil around her head, I couldn't be bothered to get rid of the hair that was inside the hat. Because, let's face it, no one will ever see it again. For the scalping part, we first had to make a little bit of mixy-mixy the two parts of the epoxy clay together. And then I made some little balls out of it, just to have different segments that already show me where I have the indents that a pumpkin normally has. These ridges that you see along the whole thing. And yeah, first I put all the balls onto it, bulked everything up a little bit, smoothed it out. You still could see a little bit of the ridges, not on video, <laughs> but in real life they still were there, just slightly. And then I took my sculpting tools and defined everything a little bit, at least. There will be a lot of defining later and in between every step. So this was just the first of a lot of defining moments in the life of Jillian Candy Corn. And yes, I sound totally annoying now. When this was more or less like I imagined it, it was time to make the eyes. And yeah, just to have them, I first made a little indent with the end of a uh, pencil <laughs> to have the roundness that should stay in clay and then hollowed out the rest. So we had a little bit of pumpkin carving. Not a lot, but there was something that you could consider carving. Or uh, something like that. And after I was more or less satisfied with how the eyes looked, I gave it a bit of texture, so defining again. And then it was time for giving her some luscious lips. Just with a little bit of clay, I 
put it on there and tried to get the lips right. It was a little bit difficult. First it just looked like a mustache, mustache, must, you know what I mean. And it's okay, I think they are a little bit large, but who cares? She's cute in the end. That is the most important part, I think. And then we had to define everything again, <laughs> a little bit more. And it was time for the stem part of the pumpkin. First I just thought make a little one and then I wasn't satisfied with it and made it a little bit bigger and gave everything some yeah vines to look like yeah kind of some hair that is falling in front as a pony no as a fringe 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 I think it's fringe then uh, defining again, and with that, the sculpting part already was done. It went quite well, it was quite easy, and I was very happy with the result. For the last ridges, I used an aqua aquarelle uh, watercolor pencil. That's better. And um, with that, I could already see a little bit of the ridges, which gave it a, a bit more depth and that was quite cool. I think I will do this more often. And after that was dry, of course, I removed as much of the aluminium foil as was visible and then painted the color uh, the eyes black and mixed up some acrylic paint for the main pumpkin head color thing. My English talking is very, very great today again. Yay. Though I am, like we already know, one of the most patient persons in this world, in between codes, I took out my heat gun and, yeah, just... <laughs> dried her because I wanted to be done with her. Um, I don't really love the coloring part of uh, the projects. I don't know why. But with three layers, she was more or less coated evenly and though I already planned to give her a little bit of low lights, so some darker areas, I uh, couldn't be bothered anymore. So I mixed the color, or remixed it, a little bit darker, a little bit more brownish, and went to town with it. First on the lips, and then later on the ridges, the indents, just to get some more details into her whole design. Obviously, at this point, it was time for me to mix up another batch of color, and this time a green one. Because, of course, the stem and the veins, vines, not veins, vines, needed some color as well. And after some back and forth, I had a color that I was quite happy with. First coloring a little bit of the riches to get a gradient from the orange to the green. That was why I put a little bit of the orange into the green as well. First so that the colors will match a little bit better and second so that I can gradient them out a little bit to give the illusion of the stem being attached to the top of the pumpkin. Gosh, I talk so much trash today. <laughs> yeah, and then I darkened that up a little bit and was more or less done with the painting part, which I was very happy about because, meh, painting isn't my thing. 
taking out the wash, which is basically acrylic paint, water and dish soap. I sprayed her and yeah, just to get out the details that I sculpted, uh, sculpted a bit more. Then I mixed all the rest colors I had together to color the boots that I intended f or that I thought would look good on her and the picture I had in mind of her. And then after this was done, I finally was able to glue in the lashes. This time again, very, very simple. I really like it when gluing in lashes is simple. You know that I hate it. And on the last two dolls it was so simple. I am so happy about it. And after her head was done I thought she was so cute that she just needed to be a wholesome, cute, nice Halloween spirit. For her outfit, I just show the blouse here and not all of the making process. I made a um, pattern that resembles more or less a Victorian blouse because I had this picture in my head of a dress that is inspired by Victorian fashion with the poofy sleeves and the walking skirt part, but I wanted the walking skirt to be shorter, more like 50s fashion. So that is what I did. I hand sewed all of the blouse parts and yeah, was quite happy with the result. I may or may not have done a second blouse with a walking skirt and a vest that will come up in another video. I thought she was perfect for someone with candies. So out of Fimo I made two ghost lollipops by first making a ball, putting that onto a glass surface, making some indents putting arms on it and then the popsicle sticks. I did the same for two pumpkin lollipops by making a dome shape, giving it some indentations to yeah, give it more of the typical pumpkin look. Popsicle stick as well. I made two of these. Then I thought and this is where where her name came from or came from candy corn candy corn is one of the most typical yeah sweets i think <laughs> in germany we don't have it but in every movie i see candy corn so i mixed up a lighter orange from white and orange because I forgot to order yellow, then put the normal orange on top and at last a bit of white, rolled that together and just yeah, cut it into two lines that are a little bit tapered to the top to be able to cut them into little pieces afterwards. They are not as dome-shaped or pyramid-shaped uh, py as the regular candy coins, but it was okay. The rest of it I twisted into marshmallows and then I made some snakes out of orange and black, twist them together, curled them up to have some more traditional lollipops as well. Then it was just putting on some details like the eyes and I couldn't be bothered to make it too detailed. Just rolled out a snake, made little dots and put them on. They look a little bit wonky, but no one will look that close. So I'm fine with it. 
as I mentioned in the last video, sometimes good enough is good enough. Off camera, I wrapped everything into little uh, plastic bags that I made out of plastic I had laying around, finished the basket that I had laying around, put everything together, then I decorated her hat and it was time to put her together. And in the end, she looked exactly how I imagined her. And I was so happy with her that I had to make a little comic about her. Because at one moment I came up with the story for her. And yes, I hope you will enjoy her little story. That I will read to you now. On the evening of Halloween, when the night falls, a pumpkin coughed by one with a humble heart awakes. She walks the streets. And if she passes by a kid that is greedy and takes all the tasty treats, with a swoosh of her basket, they get sour and disgusting. If she passes by a child that is well behaved, with a swoosh of her basket, its sweets get even more tasty. But if a child passes her way that is humble, with a swoosh of her basket, she fills its back with the most delicious treats. Okay, maybe it's not the most um, interesting or creative story, but I really liked her. And of course, she had to na be named Jillian from, yeah, Jack, female version, Jill. Jillian was the closest or something I thought was cute. And because I had so much candy corn, it ended with Jillian candy corn. I hope you enjoyed this video and you like her. Visit Rachel Maxi's video if you like and leave her lots of love. I wish you a wonderful spooky season and we will see us in another uh, in another video. Bye.